I want you to come on a little ride with me today. A little ride that I promise you will give you one of those aha moments, either an aha moment brand new or an aha moment reminder kick in the ass that you should have remembered. This aha moment that I want to deliver today starts with a little book that I have in my possession right now called The Point and Figure Method of Anticipating Stock Price Movements, Complete Theory and Practice, A Preferred Method of the Insiders by Victor de Villiers. I think that's how you say his last name. I'm not sure. Copyright 1933. Now, for some of you, you might turn off immediately because you might think to yourself, how the f*** am I going to learn how to make money by listening to this guy Mike talk right now about some book from 1933? That's impossible. Now, of course, if you think like that, you're a f***ing moron. And this way to the egress, as P.T. Barnum once said, get the f*** out the door. I don't care. I only want to talk to people that want to learn. I only want to talk to people who Give a crap about figuring it out, not to the crowd that just wants to be spoon-fed bullshit. And if you want to be spoon-fed bullshit, well, I'm not your guy. So you're probably already guessing if you know something about the idea of point and figure, I am not a point and figure proponent. It's a form of technical analysis. It's more based on prediction. It's not trend following. That said, just like technical analysis, there are aspects to the description of point and figure, the technique of, that are very applicable to trend following. Essentially, the price. The price is it. If you are a point and figure person, which my God, I hope you're not, but if you're a point and figure person, or if you're a trend following person, the price is your decision-making cue alone. I don't know where I got this little book, little paperback book. I think someone sent it to me, actually. You know what? That's where I got it. Someone sent it to me. I would have to go back and figure out who sent it to me. To start, let me quote from page eight of the book. This method, devoid of mystery and complication, begins by reducing all material moves in the market as a whole, and in individual stocks to a minimum of simple records, and therefore anticipating the future of each and all of them from their own present action. It reduces stock market investing and trading to a business with a scientific, substantial, and definite background as it should be. Like any other business, it demands the making and preserving of certain plain records and study of them, coupled with their interpretation. Now, you already know if you're a trend-following trader, interpreting the price is not the path of a trend follower. Following the price is the path. Well, let me continue. As is well known, practice makes perfect, this method actually compels practice in an interesting way which soon becomes a habit and a fascinating hobby. Devotees of the method, well able to afford assistance, prefer to record the data personally because of the mental relaxation and the absorbing occupation it affords. Now, that sounds a little wacky to me, to be honest with you, but I do recall David Harding, who is one of the best trend-following traders. You can go find these stories. David has said this before. But he talked about keeping track of charts in his early 20s and how that actually became a foundation of his trend-following trading later on. So look, many people get to trend following in many different ways. They might start with one type of understanding or another type of understanding, or they might start with this technique or that technique. But often over time, they end up at the same place. That something like trend following supersedes point and figure. There are not point and figure hedge funds out there that are charting the point in figure for relaxation. Let me continue. As the method dispenses entirely and completely with the expense and labor involved in buying, owning, or keeping bulky memoranda of statistics, fundamentals, corporation reports, 
balance sheets, earning statements, and the other expensive, cumbersome, and elaborate paraphernalia here to tow associated with trading investing. The substitution of the time and money-saving simple records this method requires is a consideration. Now, that's a very smart way to say, trust the price, follow the price. The method takes for granted that the price of a stock at any given time is its correct valuation up to the instant of purchase and sale by the consensus of opinion of all buyers and sellers in the world by the verdict of all the forces governing the laws of supply and demand. Number two, that the last price of a stock reflects or crystallizes everything known or bearing upon it from its first sale on the exchange or prior up until that time. Number three, that those who know more about it than the observer cannot conceal their future intentions regarding it. Their plans will be soon revealed in time by the stock's subsequent actions. So that's a 1933 way of saying it's all in the price. Look, you can go on X, you can go on LinkedIn, and you can find voices every day who have an opinion about what's going to happen. The Fed is going to do this. Kamala Harris is going to do this. Donald Trump is going to do this. And they might be right politically. But how the hell do you bet on that? You don't. You're gambling if you're listening to information like that. But I heard, Mike, that the Fed is going to do a quarter point recut in September. So therefore, I know what to do next. You're guessing. You are absolutely guessing. And you're not bothering to look at history. Maybe you get a rate cut in September. Maybe you get a rate rise in September. Either way, does that mean that the market is going to do what you think it might do because all the voices told you this is what it typically does? And then even if you have that information, what are you supposed to do? You have limited capital in your account. You need to make bets. You need to have exits for all of your bets. So what do you do? You flip on TV and there's Faber and there's Kernan. Or you go on Fox and there's Bartiromo. And they say something about some company or some market or some commodity. Come on. Now, look, I understand my audience is not as wide as some of the audiences that tell their audience exactly what they want to hear. Because if I came on here every day and I started to tell you, this will happen tomorrow, bet your life fortune on it. Or this will happen the next day, bet your life fortune on it. I would probably start to get a bigger audience. More people would tune in. Now, the IQ of the people tuning in would drop precipitously. I would end up with a crowd of mild retardation. Let's be frank. Because that's what most people want. Most people don't want to think. Most people view their investing, view their trading exactly as going to Vegas. There's going to be some technique or some tip or something. I'm going to get a piece of information that day. Now, that's not exactly how it works, right? Let's go back to the little book excerpt that I just read a second ago from 1933. Yeah, I think there's problems with the point and figure method. But when they tell you, when the author says all the statistics, all the fundamentals, all the balance sheets, the earnings reports, it's all embedded in the price right now. If you accept that, do you realize how much easier your life just got? You no longer give a shit about all the voices. You no longer care. Sitting in the trend-following seat, I must admit, is a great seat to sit in. Because I do not have to pretend to know. My competition is pretending to know. So you have to ask yourself, 
as an intelligent person, and I assume my listeners are intelligent until they prove me otherwise, which does happen, it's on you. It's on you. Look at the world with open eyes. Listen clearly and focus on what matters. If you're focusing on everything else, fantastic. Maybe that's entertaining to you. It's a way to keep your mind busy. It's a way to stay occupied. But for those people who want success, those people that want achievement, those people that want more freaking money than they started with, and to get there, they want a certain sense of logic, not just voices screaming at them. The price action, as I'm describing in this book excerpt from 1933, is timeless. It doesn't change. Somebody texted me on X the other day. Mike, what do you think about these two new strategies? And they were like a couple letter acronyms. I had no clue. I had to look it up. I looked up one of them, and it was some bullshit version of, quote, trend following. It wasn't trend following, but they were calling it trend following. They were glomming on to the term trend following in some way. But it just strikes me that people get excited by the new. Well, the new strategy, the new technique. When did people change? People still move in crowds. People still create bubbles. People still don't think. People gamble. People blow money. People lose fortunes. People make fortunes. There's nothing new in human behavior. It's the same stuff. Different day. Hasn't changed. It's all embedded in the price. Everything is embedded in the price. Even the inside information. Because somebody's out there, you might be thinking to yourself, somebody has some inside information. Well, they take action. It's in the price. It's already in the price. If the insiders are doing something, it's in the price. You don't have to worry about the insiders. It's already in the price. The price that everyone can see. It's not a secret. It's there. It's in the open. There is no inside. There's something amazingly, scientifically, exceptionally brilliant about whoever it was that came up with the idea of price action trend following, following the price. I don't know exactly who figured it out. David Ricardo has his famous quote about riding your winners and cutting short your losses and taking advantage of asymmetric opportunities. I think that was in the 1700s, but why would I not think that some smart person figured this out long before Ricardo. In fact, if we take it to the logical extension and look back over history, it would not surprise me at all if some of the great fortunes, some of the great city-states that came to exist, came to exist off an understanding of trend following, came to an exist off an understanding of price action. And of course, if some had figured it out, the majority never figured it out. The majority just kept walking into the saw blades, so to speak, and getting cut up every generation, every century, and never learning and never knowing that there was something better, a better way to go through life, a better way to navigate, a more calm way to be. Beyond this book that I read to you today, this 1933 book, I have hundreds of books. I think a few from the late 1700s, a lot from the 1800s, and a lot from the early 1900s about, quote, stock market investing. And I must say, most of these books actually are repetitive. They say the same stuff. What do they say? They essentially say the same stuff that I say. 
But somewhere, perhaps post-World War II, with the rise of the mutual fund industry and the rise of manipulation via media, a lot of the books that would have otherwise been the educational material for the individual investor, books that talked about price action, books that talked about exits, books that talked about not listening to other people, the mutual fund industry destroyed a lot of that. The mutual fund industry essentially said, you no longer have to know, just trust us. And as long as we keep equity markets high, I guess the trust is there. Now, we also have to be students of history and look at certain situations and know that in the last 25 years, we have had major down spells that lasted for a very long time. That's not me making a prediction. That's just me making an observation. And again, over history, going back thousands of years, I'm sure many other people made these observations. But perhaps they kept it close to the vest. Because if you understood trend following, trading, or investing, if you understood that 2,000 years ago and you had some means, you could really acquire wealth. And other people would not understand what you were doing. They might even look at you as a god. How is that person making so much money? What are they doing? Are they just lucky? But I implore you to go ahead and take some time and dig into some of these older books. A lot of these books you're not going to find on Amazon. You can go search the deep recesses of the internet and you will find them. But this is not Amazon stuff. This is stuff where some of these British books, I think it's the F and the S, were written differently. And so you actually, it's kind of an old English writing. You have to really wake your mind up to read some of this old English. But it's all fascinating to me because humans are humans. There's nothing new under the sun. So whatever comes along and happens in the fall of 2024, if you think it's a surprise, well, yeah, it could be a surprise. Maybe we don't see that exact thing happening. But the concept of a surprise is not a surprise. The concept of a black swan is not a surprise. Meaning these things happen. And so if it's all embedded in the price, which is my forceful message of today, if it's all embedded in the price, why pay attention to the other stuff? In my opinion, it's not entertainment because I don't watch CNBC. I don't watch Fox News. I don't care what they say. It's a waste of my time. I would rather do something else more productive than listen to those types of voices, the predictive voices. It's a form of sadism in a way because if you know that everything is embedded in the price, but you allow yourself to listen to these voices nonstop, what the f is wrong with you? Something's wrong with you. You're not right. You're weak. Don't be weak. Be strong. This is not the era of weak men. This is the era of strong men. Be a strong man. Be a strong mind. Don't put up with the bullshit. Push it away. That's what I'm striving to do every damn day. And I hope you join me, and I hope to see you next week. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.